everybody, folks. We have reached the Thursday edition of the Sports Line podcast here on CHCH. I'm Bubba O'Neill. Well, as many of you know, sports in Southern Ontario is our focus. And, folks, it is hard to argue and certainly fair to say that this region has developed outstanding athletes, teams, executives, and broadcasters. Today, a very interesting lesson from the sports broadcast business. Like many occupations, it can take years and sometimes just a little bit of luck to land an on air opportunity on television. Yet at times, after climbing the ladder of success, other challenges or other elements of life become more important. Former Sportsline, Fight Network, and TSN broadcaster Candace DeVay Foglin is a perfect example of someone who found another calling. And now that you've found another calling, it is only appropriate that we have you here on Sportsline, Candace. So many years, and it's been a long time, but I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad you're willing to come in and just tell your story. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been 10 years. I left in 2014. It's 2024 now. Isn't and that crazy? <laughs> time flies. You look the same. So <laughs> I hope so. And I'm a little older, a little, but, but you know, but I'm still around. I'm still kicking, though. Yeah. You know, and and and, and you look great. And it just and, and I just see that smile that I missed so much from those good days on the Sports Line podcast. But as I talked about off the top, you did have another calling, and we'll talk about the broadcast stuff a little bit later. But what, what are you up to now? Well, now, so I have two kids now, which is um, a bit of a change since the last time I was here. Um, I have two boys, four and almost two. Um, And I'm a realtor now at the agency in Oakville um, and loving that and just started. I, you know, I took some time off to be with the boys. I was Mm -hmm. home for four years. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, just started working again this fall and... It's great. It's great. Kids are in school, daycare, and mom's at work. And <laughs> and what is it about? What, what is it about the realtor business? And I know it's out of Oakville, which is your hometown, yeah, and, yeah. and that's got to be a good feeling. Oh, it's so nice to be back in Oakville. I've been back now um, five years there, living there, and um, to so to be able to work in the community that I grew up in and I love and I know um, it's it's really special. And I'd thought about being a realtor for a long time, mm-hmm. and finally decided to be like this is no this is what i'm gonna do this is what i want to do and i'm really happy i did it um i love just meeting new people and being out and about i'm not the kind of person that can Mm -hmm. (laughs) sit at a desk all day Mm -hmm. and um you know i always loved homes and, and decor and like i would go for like open houses when I was a kid like that was fun for me right so so it's nice to be doing that and just just helping people find their dream home you know so it's it's pretty cool and and partnering up with the agency um you know we're newer here in Canada but it's a it's a brand um from that started in California CEO uh, Maurizio Umansky um and actually, we are affiliated with the show Buying Beverly Hills on oh. Netflix. Oh. And season two comes out tomorrow, guys. Actually, how's that for good timing? Uh, <laughs> the, tel- <laughs> the television, she, it, can't, it can't leave her. <laughs> I know, right? Um, yeah, season two comes out tomorrow. So it, it, I'm excited for it. If you like real estate and drama and like we're talking luxury real estate, it's mm-hmm. Beverly Hills, right? So, uh, yeah, so it's kind of cool to be affiliated with that great brand. Well, I mean, Oakville can be kind of Beverly Hills <laughs> kind of too. Oakville and Burlington. Yeah, let's yeah. let's let's not lose some focus here. I mean, and what's going on? And I don't know if that's for everybody, but yeah, nonetheless, yeah. though. And you know, in talking to people that I know that have you know taken that real estate real estate route, they say to me, Bubs, the, the great thing about it, and some of them actually were in television as well too. Yeah, is is the relationships that you build with people, and and as you said, finding their dream home, and you just can't help but want to help people. Of course, and you, I mean. You develop relationships with these people and sometimes they're existing relationships they're friends before but if they weren't friends before they usually then become friends Mm -hmm. um you Mm -hmm. you start to care about them and Mm -hmm. and you want to help them um find their dream home home is something that's important to all of us and Mm -hmm. so it's it's uh it's really cool to be a part of that now and um yeah and doing it in the community i love and you know grew up in it's pretty surreal to kind of be back there and like oh as an adult now raising my kids here Mm -hmm. um it's pretty pretty amazing Okay, you just said the key word again, and you talked about it off the top there. Two little munchkins, <laughs> Candace. And I guess actually the real estate is probably perfect because you yeah. are kind of an independent contractor. Yeah. You do your own thing, work your own hours, and yeah. also, but you get an opportunity to raise your two boys. Oh, yeah. And they're, yeah, they're they're sweet boys. They're wild boys. <laughs> but, they're, <laughs> but they're sweet kids, and you know what? They're into sports, and they're very active. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like Brooks, my oldest, he is into golf, mm-hmm. and which, you know, got his name from golf. <laughs> 
Brooks, Brooks Kepka. Kepka. Okay. Hey, he was world number one at the time when Brooks was born. Okay. Um, but he's like super into golf. Mm -hmm. Um, the youngest is now into soccer, Nash, and so, yeah, they keep me busy, they keep me on my toes, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah, I'm sure it'll be like that for years to come, <laughs> just getting started. Well, you know, I remember when we first met, probably around 2010, and the, one of the reasons why we were so interested in you in Sportsline was, you know what, wow, I mean, and not to say this isn't possible, but, like, your knowledge of sports was, was, was over the top, you know, but is that what got you in, was, that, was, was it a love for you, your whole, was it a passion for you when you were growing up? Yeah, I mean, for me, so I grew up riding horses, um, but I was obsessed with hockey when I was younger. My dad's a big Leafs fan. He still is. Bless his heart. Um, <laughs> just do something for him. Come on, like win a cup or something. It'll get farther. Win a second <laughs> round. Right, right? Get to uh, the second round. <laughs> Yeah, gosh. Um, yeah, I was super obsessed with hockey. And then um, I was like, okay, how do I, what do, how do I use that? To, and then I was interested in TV and I'm like, okay, I'll get into sports broadcasting. And at the time too, I mean, this would have been, I started in 2008, really, um, working. There was not a lot of female sports reporters or anchors. I mean, you could really, in this country, you could count on both hands, really. And you could probably name them all. Like, it, there were not a lot. No. And so I was like, that's what I'm going to do. And I, you know, I just was like, I can do it. And I did, you know, my postgrad in journalism and I interned at TSN um, off the record mm -hmm. back in the day. And then, you know, right out of school, started working for the Thai Cats and just kind of ran with it. Yes, I, it, I, the Tie Cats, and I, I've had other people on this broadcast, Louis Butko being one yeah, of them just yeah. this week, yeah. who also was, you know, a, a kind of content creator with the Tiger yeah. Cats, and and that grow, and that job has really grown. But that, you know, I've heard from so many people that have taken that role and saying that that really got them going. And so many, you learned a lot, didn't you? I learned so much. I mean, it was such an amazing experience working for a professional sports team day in day out and just you learn so much about how professional sports teams work um, and just to be at, like involved in everything and I mean we did stories every day so I was always at practice or training camp we had two a days it was just so involved um, and then I also hosted did, was game host too which was a huge thing I mean mm -hmm. new coming out of school and then you're standing there in front of all these people is like kind of crazy the, the current Natalie Sexton yes right? yeah and it's um, um, it was such an incredible experience. I mean, to be on the sidelines watching the football game is like nothing else. Um, and I learned so much from them. And then, you know, spending all that time in Hamilton and then CH, I mean, kind of hand in hand. I mean, you were always there mm -hmm. and um, meeting everyone here. And so it just kind of seemed like, okay, like I think that's maybe one day if I can get over there, that right. would be really cool. But where you built your resume was with the Fight Network and again, multi, you know, reporting, hosting. Yeah. Uh, and really diving into one particular sport. Yeah, and it's interesting. I When I started at the Fight Network, I didn't know a ton about fights and mm -hmm. fighting. Um, and just, I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to learn because fight fans are legit and they will know if you are faking it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Like I and that that's what you know, they're, like, you have to study, you have to learn. Uh, and I was like, how am I going to do this? I don't know anything about it. And I worked so hard. And then I kind of ended up into the boxing world um, and I became obsessed with it and I loved it. And I was I mean, that's what I did. I was their boxing reporter for so long. And then I actually would do boxing on the side myself. Like I got wow. into it. Yeah, I yeah. did. I mean, just training. I trained with, you know, some of the guys that mm -hmm. I would cover um, in their gym. Just, just, you know, as a workout, I wasn't going <laughs> to fight yeah. or anything. Yeah. But you learn, but, how, you learn yeah. how difficult it is. Oh, yeah. And it right. was like a gritty, like professional boxing gym it wasn't a fancy thing it was just like we were here to work hard and it was really cool um but just develop such an appreciation for that sport and a passion for it and then of course mma as well but yeah it was um i learned a lot there mm -hmm. um and then that's kind of just what led me into ch and got in here and mm -hmm. I mean, I was doing that. I also did Rogers when Rogers had like a t um, local TV station in right. Saga. And I think that's kind of when like sport, when I was there, Sportsline was kind of 
in the works. Right. It was, um, yeah, it was for sure. Yeah. And we just like stayed connected and then it just kind of. Well, and, and you're and you're you're really telling or painting a picture of exactly of what young broadcasters have to do. First of all, oh, you yeah. never you never say no. Right. Yeah. You don't. It, it, like you said, you said you, you knew very little about MMA and boxing, yeah. but you said yes. You got into it. You learned. You embroiled yourself. Get, as you said, even yeah. doing some training. And I think that young broadcasters nowadays have to really understand that you, you've got to become part of it and don't say no. Yeah. Uh, learn to be uncomfortable and yeah. make that comfortable. Yeah. Uh, and get your mileage in there because, uh, as you said, the, the Thai Cats and with the Fight Network, you were yeah. working and doing something every day. I was always doing something, and I was tr I was constantly reaching out to people and seeing where I could help out and just go and learn. And I would take any opportunity I could because, I mean, there's so much to learn. But any, it's just all about the experience and the exposure and and meeting people. Again, it's mm -hmm. coming back to the relationships that now. Mm -hmm. um, it's kind of full circle, right? It's, it's very mm -hmm. similar. It's all about those relationships mm -hmm. and networking. Mm -hmm. And when I started, I mean, I knew no one. And and I, I knew very early on that this business is a lot about relationships um, to get your foot in the door and get, Who get you the know. reps, right? And I knew no one. And so it was constantly me reaching out. I was just cold emailing and cold call, calling, like, can I come in and meet you? Um, introducing myself, sending them clips of myself, like anything I could do to get those meetings. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, and then I somehow got in with TSN. Like they, I was, you know, pestered them just to do a school assignment there. And then that turned, I parlayed that into the internship. And then, you know, it's turned into the Thai Cats thing. And I was like, this is a great opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, and I remember being in school and I was like, well, I want to do TV and it's not TV. <laughs> and, um, you know, I had some people that when I was interning, they're like, it doesn't this, you do not understand how big of an opportunity this is and what you will learn. And who, and I, I obviously took it and I'm so thankful I did. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is, it's all about relationship building and it's not easy and you have to put yourself out there and you have to be willing to do the work because if you don't want to, there's lots of people that want to do it. Mm -hmm. One of the things too, I think that I could see on that fight network, and again, when we looked at your bra, when we looked at your resume tape and and talked to you, was you know you can't be once you get to a certain level in this business, in the sports business, your fandom have has to some way. Yeah. Take a, a back seat because you can't be all bright. Like, hey, oh my God, I'm interviewing so and so. But on that Fight Network ta demo tape that we just visit, we just rolled. Here you are in boxes doing one on one with <laughs> two of the biggest boxers still to this day, in the likes of a Manny Pacquiao <laughs> and Floyd Mayweather Jr. Like, what was that like yeah. for you? You know what the the Pacquiao one I remember especially because. Um, you know, and it wasn't face to face. It was you're still talking to them. Yeah. And yeah, the Pacquiao one, because at the time, and I don't even know if he still does, but he was a big singer too, right? He was like, dude, he wasn't. I mean, he wasn't great. But like, <laughs> he did like to sing. But he loved to sing. Like I remember being on Jimmy Kimmel and singing and all that stuff. Um, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna ask him to sing because why not? Because no one else is gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And if he does it. That's great. That's great television. Like, why not? And so I just asked him. And I mean, you saw his reaction. He was kind of like, uh. <laughs> you, I could hear in my ear. I could hear, like, the people that he was with. I could hear them all laughing. Like, they thought it was funny. But he did it. Right. And now I have him singing to me, right? Forever. I will forever have that memory. Yes. Um. So it was just kind of one of those things that's like, you might as well ask. Mm -hmm. Like, why not? Like, put yourself out there and mm -hmm. see. And if it doesn't work out, it doesn't work out. And that's mm -hmm. happened before. But if it does work out. It's great. It's great television. It was great television <laughs> and was certainly, again, when we're looking at the resume tape and sports line, the 2.0, the CHCH version comes to, to fruition and we're building that, building that sort of brand. Uh, we haven't even gone on air yet. And we determined that the show also needed to have a report here and there and to, you know something going on locally a and we put out you know the applications and whatever and we got a lot of responses guys girls uh experience of very various levels but there was something that stood out about you um you know and just even talking to you that you know you were you were just you were ready to go or you were ready to go and ready to do whatever 
And and I thought that was a, an important part of you. And I guess that, again, that's all your building and experience that was going on with you. I mean, look at you. You 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 you. you, you this is again, like I said, 2010, 2011, 2012, and you were did you were willing to do a variety of things. Look at you laughing. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you know what I mean? And 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 I think you know you took this opportunity and ran with it. Yeah, and I think for us too, it was. I remember like one of the first sports line reports I did. I, like going to, to the Leafs practice and stuff and everyone you know they're they're all talking about last night's game or tonight's game or whatever and we were different we wanted to have fun with it and just Look at you. Of like no I know that was great the, the James Hinchcliffe was I like I just remember that was one of my favorite stories because we got to do go-karting it was pretty cool and I was holding him off there I held him off for like such a, I was like this James Hinchcliffe and I had him and then I obviously went too wide and he cut inside like I was <laughs> I, <laughs> he is a professional driver, right? <laughs> I know, but I was like, okay, I have. It's so cool to see all this because I haven't seen any of this in so long. Um, but yeah, the hinge cliff stuff, it was like, okay, I'm like holding him off. He's a pro driver, right? But uh, yeah, just stuff like that. We were different. And that was the kind of the point. And I remember going to that, like it was training camp and everyone was, okay, all serious and this. And we, were, we weren't. That was the point of this report was kind of just lighthearted. Mm -hmm. And I remember it was... Um, Ron Wilson was the coach at the time mm -hmm. and it was towards the end and so like he was extra prickly <laughs> and, <laughs> and you know and and so so I was just like you know we're going to see what they did for their summer that was kind of the theme of our report mm -hmm. and I remember there was a huge scrum mm -hmm. and I'm in there and I'm like at the bottom right because sometimes there's so many people and mm -hmm. you are on top of each other and you're like squatting down and you're holding the mic and whatever and and um and I was like, hey, like, Ron, I think I was one of the first people who went. And I was like, hey, Ron, like, how was your how was your summer? <laughs> and everyone else was kind of like, what is this girl doing? Like, why are you asking? Well, yeah, because they want right? to know. They want to know. They want, they want to ask about the power play. Of and, course. You know, that, wah, wah, wah. And it was like a just, you know, because they're like, well, he's not going to, that's not going to fly with him, right? And he, he kind of was taken aback. Mm -hmm. And then he was like, oh, actually. And he, you know, talked about his grandkids and that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And it kind of softened him up. And mm -hmm. he was almost, like, relieved. It was like, oh, this is a nice, like, something different to talk about mm -hmm. than the same old same old and i think that's what we tried to do mm -hmm. with the reports and um so yeah and then eventually the people would see me around and whatever and they'd okay it's sports line like i get mm -hmm. what, what's going on here because <laughs> i would sometimes ask yeah. random things and they're like no i mean oh. and that was the whole point of it and that's what we wanted that yeah, show was yeah. to be different yeah. it wasn't to be you know a tsn yeah. uh, sports center or, or it was it was about that you know uh, you know Hampshire and i and yeah. port wando and yourself and other you know scott radley all the people that came yeah. in and helped yeah. out yeah. about you know talking about sports at times debating about sports yeah. and then having your report part as something different as you yeah. said talking to people getting to know a little story behind them yeah. james hingecliffe as you said r r racing with them we just showed no there's so many exact we could just show so many tapes of you but i'll tell you one candace there is one report i, uh -oh. I mean i don't know I, I, again journalistically i don't know if it was your best i can't even say that but all i know there's one that sticks in my mind and it had a lot to do with labor day the tiger cats and the argonauts and what goes on in the pre-game festivities and we gotta roll this we got, this is so much fun go cats go Tailgating goes hand in hand with football games and here in Hamilton, it could not be more true. The Labor Day Classic is the biggest game of the season, especially this year with both the Argonauts and the Tiger Cats in the playoff hunt. So, what makes for a great tailgate? There are some basic necessities one must have to ensure a successful pregame party, such as good friends and lots of good food. The more the merrier definitely applies to the complete tailgating experience, even those fans cheering for the away team are welcome. Now, you definitely want to pace yourself so you don't end up like this guy who missed out on all the action. I even got in on some of it, participating <laughs> in my very... Like, perfectly captured moments. Look at you, embroiled, again, what we wanted, embroiled <laughs> in the action. Uh, and this was a special report. I mean... Very, very appropriately dressed, too. I mean, like, a dress and heels <laughs> in a field, playing games with people that are, like, you know, 10 beers deep at that point. <laughs> 
You know, like, but you were involved. You, I mean, th that shot of the guy oh who clearly <laughs> didn't even make the game <laughs> passed out on the bench. Like, what a beautiful <laughs> shot of what exactly goes on in these things. Oh, gosh, it was great. That was that was so much fun to be able to do that mm -hmm. kind of thing. And and just, yeah, these were fun reports. You weren't seeing this on, you know, the other stations. Mm -mm. So, um, and especially like that is the Labor Day Classic is so big here in Hamilton. And so it's to, to you get to really see mm -hmm. what it's like. And so it was pretty cool. And people were I mean, they were, you know, people loved it. People loved to get the camera out and mm -hmm. people all want to be on TV and share their thoughts and opinions and get involved somehow. So yeah. yeah, it was pretty cool. That was that was great. That was a great report. I could watch that over and over. We took out some of the, the sound, but we just wanted to really hear from you and whatever. And just, I mean, I'll tell you, that was, a, a, that was a, again, capturing really one of the biggest days here in Hamilton. Oh yeah. Really is that Labor Day. You all, you all know that as you covered it a couple of times, you know, but as we have it, as we have it in this business, one thing hopefully gets to the next thing. And one day you came to me and said, Bubs, I'm done. <laughs> I'm moving on, right? Moving and on. Moving on up, but moving on up, right? Yeah. And, and, a, and a great opportunity at TSN. Yeah, you know what? I, I had an opportunity to join the morning show at TSN Radio, uh, Mike Richards in the Morning, and I thought it was, you know, I was here for four years, and it was just something different. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, I wanted to give it a go, and I was getting up really early. Mm -hmm. uh, I was up at, you know, 3.15 every Ooh. morning Ooh. Uh, for, you know, two years, two and a half mm -hmm. years I did that. Mm -hmm. Um but no, it was a great experience and it was a new, I didn't know much about radio either. So I had to learn that. And, um, yeah, I mean, we had a blast. It was, I would do the sports center updates every right. half hour. And mm -hmm. so, you know, my, my day was done at like 10 30 in the morning, which mm. was just, uh, it's appealing, but right. then it, you're so, you're so tired. Anyone that's done shift work or more like a morning show knows it's, uh, mm. yeah, you, you gotta, it takes a toll. Um, but I enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Well, Mike Richards is kind of a fun guy. Oh, right? yeah. We had a blast. Mm -hmm. We had a blast. And it was a lot of joking around. It really didn't feel like a job, mm -hmm. right? Um, which this did not. It's That's the cool thing about being able to and having the privilege to work in TV and radio and that kind of thing is like it doesn't feel like work. Mm -hmm. Like we're pretty lucky that, you know. No doubt. Getting to do it. Um, so, so, yeah, it was just it was a really cool experience. And I did that for a while. Um and then I was just kind of, you know, it does take a toll on your body working that early and knew I wanted to have kids and that kind of thing. And just, I was like, you know what, maybe it's time that I, I move on. And, and, um, you know, I was in broadcasting for almost nine years, I guess it was. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and yeah, but I, it was a great memory there too, for sure. So, so, and that, and that's, that's where we get to, we get to this kind of crossroads. And I think all of us, every one of us at some point in our lives, we get to some type of, uh, you know, day of where you've got to figure stuff out and where am I going with my life and what am I doing? And you're at an age right now to at that point where to where you were, those are the questions that are, that, that were coming up and, and you ended up out of the business as they say, Yeah. but you found something else, right? And, and it, were you just kind of searching? What was it? Yeah. I think I'd always kind of wanted to, I'd always thought about doing real estate for, for a really long time. Mm -hmm. And when I left TSN, it was just funny because a lot of other people got into it and I was like, ah, oh, maybe it's not the right time. It just mm -hmm. seems like everyone's doing it. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to try something like a desk job. Right. And I had never done a desk job. So, um, I got in with the provincial government and I worked for the ministry of seniors. And then I ended up working for the ministry of health as well. Um, but I did, you know, some HR and business services, and then I ended up doing communications and there were definitely aspects that I did like of it, but it kind of made me realize oh, this isn't really for me. I should, I should do what I've been thinking about. I should do the real estate. So while I was working there, I started getting my real estate license. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, you know, commuting on the train I'd be reading my book and, and then going to work and then on my lunch break, reading mm -hmm. my book and, and doing all the exams. And then. Yeah, I got my license um, right before, like a month before I had my first son and then kind of stayed home for four years and parked mm -hmm. parked the license and, mm -hmm. and stayed home. I was a stay-at-home mom and nice. then lived through COVID with, you know, my oldest. He was only four months old when COVID happened. Wow. Um, so it was learning how to be a new mom and having a kid and figuring that out. Right. And then also covid and not knowing what's going on and not being able to leave the house with a new baby mm -hmm. um it was quite a challenge and then you know got through that and had my other son and then it was like okay 
timing is right now that I can start. And my oldest, um, he went to junior kindergarten in September. The youngest went to daycare. And I was like, okay, now it's, I was Me ready. Me time. Yeah. Me time. Yes. And I was, I was ready for it. Mm -hmm. So, um, so this fall and even now it's still a lot of big changes. Right. So, um, but like you said, it's this, like this time in my life. And I feel like so many people go through that, um, you know, whether it's second careers, third careers, because kind of like my third career at this point. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's um, you know, we're constantly changing and learning and you change what you want to do. Great point. And, Great and, point. Um, yeah. So it's been a lot. You know, you alluded to this when you when getting back to the broadcast side of things and the bro broadcast side of, you know, and, and you being at home, actually, yeah. you being at home for that four years. And when you when you turn on the TV and you turn on CH, when you turn on TSN Sportsnet and all the sports that's going on, there's been so many changes, you know. Um, but the good thing is you are one of the, you know, in this area, one of the pioneers of, of, of a woman with a microphone in, 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 in the scrums and doing your thing. And I guess it, there's got to be a moment or a, a feeling of strength or empowerment or when you turn on TSN, because TSN now have more female anchors than male anchors by a large margin. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's pretty amazing to see. Because like I said, when I started, there were not that many. I mean, you could name them. It was probably under 10. Like, it was not a lot. Nationwide. And nationwide, exactly. And, I mean, when I would go to Leafs practice or, you know, Jays or Raptors, whatever, it was typically me and mostly men. There would be occasionally another girl, and we'd talk. And be like, oh, hey. Like, because <laughs> there just wasn't. And, I mean, everyone was great. I, I mean, everyone was really welcoming and that kind of thing. But it was it was almost a novelty it felt like at the time like it was just so like oh well now there's now there's a female sports reporter right there oh did you ever did, did, not to interrupt but did, did you ever feel like i don't know kind of uh intimidated maybe for sure for sure i and i don't think that wasn't intentional by people i think but i mean i remember going to my first time at like the blue jays um batting practice and i mean everywhere you go whether it's hockey or basketball or baseball they have their own like this is how we do things for like if it's a morning skate or a shoot around or whatever and you learn the cadence and when you go it's just oh, okay I know what I'm doing but I didn't know and you know you go down there and it's like okay well the locker room's open and it's like so can I just like they're like yeah, you can go in you can talk to guys if you want to interview them bring them out to the field and but like walking into a professional you know at the time I my first Jays batting practice, they were playing the Yankees. And I think we went because I think it was like uh, Russell Martin was uh, catching for them still back in the So we wanted to do because he's Canadian. I think mm -hmm. a lot of people want to talk to him. So that's why we went. And I remember walking into the Yankees clubhouse and it's like, that is super intimidating. I was maybe 25. Like I'm a baby. And it's all men. And... You know, there's Derek Jeter. That's how long ago this was. <laughs> there's Derek Jeter sitting there who's like one of the biggest sports figures ever. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, it's very intimidating. They all kind of look at you like, who's this girl in here, right? Um, because, again, back then it wasn't like super common. Um, but, uh, you know, and then you find you meet people. And, like, I remember I went up to Jamie Campbell and I introduced myself. And I was like, hey, I'm new. I'm with Sportsline, blah, blah. And, I, and, like, how does this work? And he was just like explained everything he was so gracious and lovely and was just like oh this is how it works and I was like okay and then you develop rapport with people and then it gets easier but especially the initial when you don't know what you're doing mm -hmm. and there's all these people and especially like athletes of that caliber too mm -hmm. um it's very intimidating me just you know 25 year old me walking into the clubhouse for sure, for sure. it it was it, yeah there was definitely moments um and you just have to pretend like you're not scared and mm -hmm. <laughs> not nervous but you build the thick skin though for sure you do you have to mm -hmm. you have to or you won't last long and and you have to be willing to put yourself out there and like I can be a shy person um sometimes my like my first inclination is kind of like oh, a little shy but in those situations you cannot be um and you just have to push through it and pretend that you're not and mm -hmm. pretend that you're not nervous and you know and and then it becomes easier the more you do it mm -hmm. kind of fake it till you make it right mm -hmm. but um but yeah there there were definitely moments um and i mean now it's just it's so different there's it's like you said tsn has more female anchors <laughs> and reporters than men and it's really cool to see it, i think and and, and and dovetailing off that too 
the, the Professional Women's Hockey Association, and we had we had Emma Malte here and Renata Fass sitting mm. right here in this seat, and 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 how proud they are of the product that they're putting out there right now. And, and in Toronto right now, they're on like an 11 game win streak as well too. But again, the, the, the changing face of sports right now that, you know, we had seen professional women's hockey knock on the door a couple of times, fail, 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 fail. But this isn't failing. Like the time is now. You look at the crowds at this. Like they're going they're to packed. set a huge record. That's, when, when Toronto go to Montreal, they're expecting twenty-one thousand people there, That's and crazy. this is becoming on the regular now in this league. Yeah. yeah, it's it's amazing to see, and mm. it's it's time. Like you said, like this is the time now, and I think everyone's like, yeah, this is long overdue. And people that have, and you know, people, I you know people, daughters, little girls, and like they look up to these women, and mm. and for them now they get to see a product in real life mm -hmm. on the ice at that level mm -hmm. um, is pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty inspiring and you know, it shouldn't, it shouldn't be a novelty anymore. It's no, it's the norm now. Right. Um, which is, is pretty amazing to see. You know, what's the best part about it for me from a male and old man male right now <laughs> is probably looking at it right now for your sons yeah, is that yeah, your yeah. sons will have a different perspective for female athletes than yeah. I ever did. For sure, for sure they will, because the, to them that's just it's normal. Like we, we oh, we grew up watching this and that mm -hmm. kind of thing, and like women in sports media too, right? It's like oh, it's normal. It's not like it's you know they're just trying to put a female on air so they can feel. It's like no, this is normal, mm -hmm. and they're good at what they do too. It's not mm -hmm. just men that can do it. Um, girls watch sports too. Girls play sports too. I. It's just always been funny to me that it's like oh girls can't talk about sports and you get that well like did you, you didn't play so you don't know it's like men that are reporters didn't play either it's hi like <laughs> give me a break right so it was i just always thought that was well you can't know you you don't know like you get looked at differently sometimes especially back when i was doing it just because like oh you're a girl and like you're a young girl you don't you don't know what you're talking about it's like well why can't i like sports why can't i watch sports too mm -hmm. so i just always yeah, I was just always kind of perplexed by that. It's like, girls can't watch sports? Like, <laughs> of course no, they do. But Candace, so you're one of those ones. Again, you're, I, 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 I don't want to maybe, maybe you don't like the word, but it, it's just a pioneer. And you laid the track down for for, for others, right? Yeah. The, you, you, you never, this is one thing I've learned about television, right? It, it, you never know, you, gotta, oh, you always got to kind of watch what you say and yeah. watch how you act. Because, <laughs> and, 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 I, and, and I'm, I'm going to turn this in a positive light because you never know who you're motivating. Right, sure. because someone at some point turned on the television, watching Sportsline, maybe hanging out with their folks, yeah. uh, or hanging out with their brother or whatever. And I'm going to say this from a female perspective, and saw you, and saw and and thought maybe you know what I want to do that. Like how cool, or you know, hey, I love sports. Right, everything that you that that propelled you into this business. Yeah. Th now we're getting on the masses right now because then you look at the PWHL, you look at you know the NBA. There are now women in positions in television, calling games right now in the NFL and NBA. And and this, I, I didn't know if that would ever happen. I knew women would progress, but now, like you said, it's normal, yeah. and we're getting to a point right now where it's not like, well, she's a woman. You know, right? Yeah, it's. She's a person. She's a fan. She knows as much as anyone else, yeah. right? And I think that's the most beautiful thing about this transformation that we're seeing in, in this sports business. So with that said, I will rely on your Fight Network uh, knowledge right now because awesome. what is going on here? I think in the sometime in July, we're going to see this... <laughs> Paul, Chris Paul, 27 years, Jake Paul. Year, Jake Paul. <laughs> I don't even know he was some internet guy who's fought a couple of fights against some pro guy. And he's going to fight the likes of a 58-year-old uh, Mike Tyson like I, on Netflix. And as I've talked about this, I think this is junk. But I know on Saturday, July 20th, what I'll be doing. I'll be watching this. What? What? It's crazy. Yeah. I will 100% be watching too yeah. because, come on, yeah. I want to see it. But it's just, it's crazy Mike Tyson is, I'm not going to say old, he's older. He's 58. <laughs> he looks I mean, good, he lo though. I'll give it to him. He looks good. But is he really, I mean, I, I definitely want to see what happens because he looks good. Look at him. He's hitting hot. Like, I don't know. I just, and the J Jake Paul thing, I didn't really, again, I'm past like YouTube or whatever, but like, I'm a little old for it. I don't know much about Jake Paul, except till recently because he's doing all these fights. And I was like, who is this guy? 
Um, so I watched his, he had, I think he had a documentary on Netflix mm-hmm. too. So I watched it to be like, who's this guy, right? Um, but I guess he's like a legit fighter. He's legit. I mean, he's not a bum, as they say, right? No. Like he's been handling his business in the ring. So um, this is just so interesting to me because Mike Tyson's going to be 58. So I don't really understand. Like, I mean, it's money. I get it. <laughs> I get it. First Money. ever live event on for sporting for, on Netflix. Like, it's this is huge. It's crazy. It's crazy. But I am, like, I get it. Because people, like me, I want to watch. Mm-hmm. People will, it, I think the numbers for this are going to be insane. <laughs> What's wrong with this? I know. 58-year-old man. He could win. I don't know. I, you know. I don't know. I don't think he's going to. But he's Mike Tyson. Got to get well, the benefit, benefit of the doubt, right? Well, we've seen Tanya <laughs> Harding in the ring, right? They can remember the celebrity fighting stuff. And oh you're right. God. You're right. This this is a it's it, it's hopefully it's just a one off and and something that uh, catches our attention and. <laughs> I think we, you know, hey, uh, you know what? I, I'm guilty of it. On uh, July 1st, I, jo- I show uh, Joey Chestnut eating uh, how many hot dogs. So if I can put that on television, I guess I can. Be, I can't watch that. Right? I can watch any kind of like fighting or whatever. Yeah. I can't watch that guy eat those hot dogs. It is so gross. It actually, it, it really is gross in the thing. And I actually I just showed him the other day eating pierogies, right? So, oh, God. It, it, the com- <laughs> you know, cheers to the competitive food eating network. Unbelievable. It's something. You know, unbelievable <laughs> has been you, Candice DeVay and uh, Candice Foglin. Uh, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a proud moment for you to be here for me, uh, to translate the things that you have done in your career. I'm so happy and pleased to see that through the transition of what you've become and what you've decided to do, uh, you're enjoying it, you're thriving in it. You, you've, as we both know, you gotta enjoy it. It's not a job if, if you're enjoying what you're doing and, and making people's uh, making a difference in people's lives. That's a that's a big thing for me. And and to see you doing well and thriving well and being a mother. And I, I got to meet your kids because yeah. I got to say, did they got blonde hair just like you? Oh, yeah. They're very, especially the youngest. It's like white blonde, oh. blue eyes. They're cute little boys. I got to meet them someday. Yes, definitely. Thanks for coming in, Candice. Thank you for Great having for the update. me. It was so nice. Thanks for coming in. Hey, folks, Cad, it's just one of the many success stories that we love to sit down and present to you. If you do know of an athlete, team, or event that deserves some attention, we want them on the Sportsline podcast. Look us up on many of CHCH's social media platforms. And while you're at it, please comment. Hit that subscribe and thumbs up button because we do appreciate your feedback. It can only make us better. For the talented minds and hands that make this podcast possible, thank you so very much. And we'll see you tomorrow.